and this month, having that long-standing tradition of the church to pray for the departed faithful, the tradition to pray for the dead, however, even predates the church. Going back to Judas Maccabeus of the Old Testament, where it is written, it is a holy and wholesome thought to pray for the dead, telling us about Judas Maccabeus sending 12,000 drachmas of silver to Jerusalem for the sacrifice of the soldiers who died in battle. But when says the church adopted it? St. Chrysostom declared that the early Christians from the very beginning prayed during Mass for the dead by order of the apostles. We also have the story of St. Monica asking her son, St. Augustine, to remember her at the altar. So we see the oldest Mass books containing prayers for the dead. Even so, there wasn't a season or month for it, or even a day until almost the year 1000, when in 998, uh, St. Odilo, abbot of Cluny, began it. And the story is narrated in the book titled Purgatory by Father Shum. It's a very excellent book. Of many stories of souls in purgatory and their sufferings. But this story unfolds of how a pilgrim cast ashore by a tempest found the house of the hermit. The hermit asking this pilgrim if he knew the abbot Odilo. Then relating that he often heard the evil spirits complaining of pious persons who by their prayers and alms deeds deliver souls from the pains which they endure in the other life, and principally that of Odilo, abbot of Cluny, and his monks. The hermit then asked the pilgrim to exhort Odilo and his monks to redouble their good works, to continue their efforts, which they did by Odilo ordering all his monasteries of his institute on the day following all saints to make a commemoration of the faithful departed, which was later extended by popes to the Universal Church. Thus we have the Feast of All Souls Day. And we know the souls in hell cannot be helped. They're there for eternity. Severed from the sight of God, from the love of God. <clears throat> the souls in heaven don't need help enjoying the beatific vision. No, these prayers then, even of the Old Testament, are obviously directed to the souls of purgatory. Purgatory, as a dogma of the faith, however, was not defined until the Council of Trent in 1545, which gives us, from that, that council, two clear points about purgatory. Namely, there is a purgatory, and the souls there may be assisted by the sufferings, the suffrages of the faithful, the church militant. Obviously, all of us can, as Catholics believe there is a purgatory, but do we keep this ever before our minds? Are we ever conscious that souls right now are suffering a fire from which they can be released by our suffrages here on earth, which are much less? We have to have a living faith carried out by our actions, remembering the holy souls in purgatory need our prayers, our prayers and sacrifices. A holy and wholesome thought as we read in scripture to pray for the dead. It's not only a way to release them from their fiery tor torment, but a way to avoid going there ourselves. Even sinners can assist and be assisted by the dead, the souls in purgatory, for example, by having a mass offered for them. And they will surely, assuredly pray for you if you release them from such suffering. But why is it so urgent? It's commonly held by theologians that the torments of purgatory, being the same as a, that of hell, the least pain there is greater than the greatest pain on earth. They suffer this with the knowledge of their exclusion from the beatific vision. Not only do they want to release to see God and all the just in heaven, but God wants them there too, to adore him with the other saints. But as justice must be satisfied, then we can satisfy that justice here on earth with lesser degrees of suffering. St. <clears throat> Francis of Rome tells us that the souls in purgatory are comforted by the prayers of the faithful on earth. So it's important for us that we seek to gain these indulgences indulgences allotted by the church for the remission of their sins, for the blotting out of their sins, their, their temporal punishment due to their sins. 
by gaining indulgence in the church, we can remit their punishment in part or in full. So you see, it is a holy and wholesome thought to pray for the dead. For the greatest form of charity is when we see the spiritual needs of others. So too, with us, when you see the spiritual need of one another, to pray for them, pray for each other. And not only pray, but give a good example to one another. How happy would we be if we affected the conversion of some old friend through our prayers and sacrifices? We would be overjoyed. Why? Because we have gained the soul for Christ. But their entrance into heaven is not yet assured. We can add to the immediate adoration of God as is given to him by the just in heaven by a release of souls from purgatory. How will God not reward us after this? How will the soul be freed not seek to gain anything and everything for our benefit? For by our efforts through the indulgences of the church we have placed them face to face with God Almighty. What would you give to see that? We have freed them from the greatest pains and sufferings into eternal rest, peace, and blessedness. Surely, they are going to pray for us. And even though it is only this month that the Holy Mother of the Church expressly uses to remind us to pray for them, we are to remember them every day at Mass. And I hope we can extend the gaining of indulgences to every day as well. There are numerous adult indulgences out there year-round, not just in the month of November. The Church makes it as easy as making the Stations of the Cross, praying five decades of the Rosary before the Blessed Sacrament, or praying the prayer, Behold, O kind and most sweet Jesus, before a crucifix. These are plenary indulgences offered year-round. The first two are totius quotius, or as often as you do them, you can gain a plenary indulgence. Most are just for one day. You can gain it once a day, but these are as often as you do it. As often as you make the stations of the cross, as often as you pray the rosary before the Blessed Sacrament, you gain a plenary indulgence, and you apply that to the poor souls in purgatory. And so the church is a spiritual family. And we, we need, as Our Lady of Fatima said, to pray and sacrifice for those who have no one to pray and sacrifice for them. She also told Lucia that a little girl was to be in purgatory until the end of time, end of the world. How many have to serve a like sentence? How many souls are in purgatory from even the Middle Ages or before? carrying out their suffering sentences, and they have no one to pray for them because they're completely forgotten by mankind. So we are the church militant, and we have that ability to sacrifice here on earth for the suffering souls in purgatory, to gain those indulgences which the church makes so readily available and easy to gain. The Church exhorts us this month especially to pray for them. But the fires of the purgatory burn year-round. Let us remember the poor souls in our prayers every day. They will remember us when they're in heaven. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. And may the souls of all the faithful departed from the mercy of God rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.